I only have one rule. Everyone fights, no one quits. Welcome to WTC Squadcast, a podcast focusing on international metas, tournaments, communities, and the World Team Championship. The WTC is a proud partner of the T-Sports Network, Best Coast Pairings, and is sponsored by The Army Painter. If you'd like to support the podcast and the WTC, please visit our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash WTC Squadcast. Now, let's get on with the show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WTC podcast, Inter Squad. With me, it's your host, Ushik, today. And we are going to get a deep insight about the specific teams in this podcast series. And tonight's guest is Team Norway with Captain Thor and Patrick. Say hello, guys. Hi. Hi, hi. Uh, Can you... Tell who you are as well, so that way we'll know whose voice belongs to who. Yeah, uh, I'm the I'm the lucky one who gets to be captain for Team Norway, uh, Tore. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You can call me Thor, that's no problem. I will call you Thor, I'm not going to make it that much of a fool of myself now, am I? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> my name is Patrick John Woods, the most Norwegian sounding guy in the world. Um, and I'm the vice captain. Uh, all right. So, okay. From my understanding, I've talked before. You guys are new to this, right? Yeah, this will actually be our first time attending. Okay. So, how did you? Uh, can you tell us about a bit of your 40k past and how did you come to hear about the WTC? Uh, yeah. Uh, for my uh, end, uh, I have played 40k for many, many years, and uh, it was actually not until I think maybe two or three years ago I heard Norway had a team. Oh, wow. Um, so, uh, and then since then, it has been like a goal for me to join. So I've tried to play tournaments, the few tournaments we have here, and do well. So I'll get noticed, uh, and eventually I did. Yeah, uh, for myself, um, I played 40k many years ago when I was like, I don't know, 12, 13, but ended up leaving the game pretty quickly because nobody wanted to play with 12 or 13 year olds. Um, and uh, ended up coming back to uh, to the hobby uh, when I was living in Japan about four years ago. Um, and uh, I'm born and raised in, in Norway, but I lived all over the place. And uh, I... Uh, had um, a sports career before in, in martial arts and when that ended I needed something to to fill the competitive nature that I have and uh, it became 40k so all out on uh, on this game now. Okay so th- I, this, is, this is a question for both of you. So you have started 40k in the past but haven't heard about the, the tournament until recently. Uh, did, did you not look for it, or was it simply not uh, not something brought up in the community? It was, wasn't really brought up uh, in the community, because we, here in Norway, we, the community is quite small, oh. and we used to be quite divided. Uh, there was some players playing in the uh, west, and some in the north, and some in the east, and... So we, we had our small communities. Yeah, so um, the Norwe- like, like Thor is saying, the Norwegian community has always been geographically very um, split up. Um, and for the most part, it's been looking towards the US for the, the, the format to play tournament 40K, unlike many other European countries. So like ETC style 40K was has never really been a thing in Norway. Um, and and you know the the group of players that used to go to the etc was more you know along the lines of 
hey, who uh, wants to come to this uh, this cool tournament uh, and you know drink and play 40k and have fun? And it was never really let's go and and try to um, you know compete for for being uh, one of the best teams. All right, so it's okay. So I I hear about the geographic uh, separation between a, in a country's player base quite a lot from a lot of people, but that seems to have recently changed, especially in the last few years with the overuse of social media and ex access to communication apps like Discord and TTS. So. That's actually good to hear that you are now actually building a community. This and this brings me to my next question: How did you actually end up as the captain and the vice captain? Because you, you guys, as you said, are entire rookies. You haven't attended the WTC yet. Yeah, I think that was just a lucky coincidence. Um, uh, the guy who was supposed to captain Norway last, uh, two years ago. He uh, became a father. Ah, good for him. Had his, had, a, had his first son, and then the captaincy was open. And uh, then I was asked. Uh, I had been doing fairly well in, in tournaments here in Norway. So I was asked to be the captain. Uh, me and uh, uh, Rasmus, that is also on the team. And yeah, why not? <laughs> it would be fun to try. <laughs> Uh, have you attended any uh, team tournaments before, or only singles so far? I, uh, as Patrick said, uh, here in Norway, there has been second to none focus on team tournaments. Mm -hmm. But we have had some small events. Uh, we have a local group here, that's Norshammer. They're doing a really good job for, for the community here, and, and they try to arrange a team tournament with only three teams. Yeah, three three-man teams. Yeah, three-man teams. <laughs> oh, this, I was thinking like three teams. That is, that would be a bit hard. Yeah, no, they have three-man teams, uh, and I think they have done it twice, with some some success. But it's a, it's a small community, so it's hard for us to to bring many teams. So yeah, I mean that's that that's the thing. Like, so the biggest tournament in Norway uh, this year will have seventy-four players. So it's a decently sized tournament. Mm -hmm, indeed. But the thing is, most of those people, um, not all, but but many of them, you know, it's a it's a once or twice in a year social weekend where they go and meet friends and hang out and have fun. Um, and so, you know, they, they plan these these couple of trips for a couple of events a year. And and if something else pops up, it's usually not something that people travel for. Um, so. Team, team tournaments are difficult here when the community is so spread out. Um, I've played quite a few team games, eight-man team games, uh, when I was living in Japan um, because <laughs> we had teams there based on uh, like the nationalities of the people who were playing. So you know, we had a, a British and American team, and we had a French team. And, you know, we had a lot of uh, of uh, friendly and non-friendly rivalry going on. So we used to. <laughs> That was friendly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not really a thing uh, in Norway yet. Hopefully, it's something that we can change, um, because you know, as 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 Ian Thor want want the Norwegian team to be as good as it can be, uh, we definitely see that playing team games is something that is just the best practice for that. Yeah, it's it is quite a different. Uh field if you call it the team just team events compared to single player events is quite a different ballpark because you are restricted in factions you are restricted in the win conditions players are encouraged to play harder at least when they but you're not nobody in this tournament in the WTC will leave even at one point on the table if that match can end in 119 instead of 020, you are going to play that to the end because you are you're not just playing it for yourself, you're playing it for your team and your your for your friends, essentially your comrades. And that is yeah. that changes everything. Yeah, like, and, and one point can mean the difference between, you know, a loss or a draw or a draw and a win, right? So indeed. 
Yeah, I, it's, I'm really looking forward to playing playing as a team. Like, if you have a bad game, try to get the most of it to help help your friends, and uh, that, that I'm really looking forward to that. It's 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 something that it add, because it adds a different dynamic of responsibility, and you take on the responsibility of providing your best result, and also it adds a bit of a pressure to not fuck up as if you're if you, if you're paired against somebody that you are expected to win a maximum point and then you'll get only a 15 5 it's like and then that's a huge you feel you feel happy that you think you should you won 15 5 but no because then just your match ends quickly and then you Expel you start to wait for the results of the other games and as if the results are closer and you might get a draw or a loss you feel responsible and then at least for some people players i've seen that i've seen it break i feel not break but like make some players sad but i've also seen it encourage those players to play even harder in the further rounds so it, it is interesting to see with a lot of people this the WTC it will have around 250 to 300 players. It is interesting to see how the same thing affects different people. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, the one nice thing about you know playing as a team, um, uh, rather than just playing for yourself or you know losing for yourself, you win or lose as a team. Um, but also mm -hmm. the fact that there's so much more strategy and tactics. Um, uh, that has an impact on the success. You know, like you could have the eight eight best players in the world with the eight best factions in the world, but if you don't understand how pairing works or how matchups work, you're not going to win, right? <laughs> no, it's, it's it's there are some teams that are notoriously uh, notoriously great at pairings where you somehow. You think you entered your pairings at advantageously, but at the end of the half hour, you're like, "What did we do wrong? We were supposed to win this, but now we are paired incorrectly in every match." Polish are famous for this. It's like they somehow do great pairings, but uh, that's something we we are trying to focus on to to get uh, to, to get the understanding of the pairings because I, we think that's. Maybe where we can get a few extra points. Uh, right, so, so... Go on, please. Well, I just wanted to say, like, for our team, um, as, as we're trying, you know, a new project, uh, going from, from a more casual um, a group of players to, um, uh, to trying to build a strong team going forward, we understand that, you know, we're not going to... Almost certainly not going to get in the top five or ten... Um, uh, but we're trying to build, you know, a solid core group of good players, and we're trying to build um, the best understanding of, of, you know, the tactics and the strategies and everything like that. And you know, I just got a message from from one of the guys on the team just now, because um, we've been talking earlier about, you know, not necessarily playing the hardest, but playing the smartest. And he just messaged me and he wrote, yeah, we're going to be team sneaky fuckers. You know, like we, yeah. we don't have a team full of people who can play 15 tournaments a year because we don't have 15 tournaments a year. So we, we have to use what we can to get, you know, as much advantage as we can. And, uh, and so we'll, you know, focus on, on everything that we, we possibly can do to give ourselves that advantage. And also TTS helps. We will, we will try and use that too as much as we can. Yeah, TTS certainly helps in a country where, you know, the geography means that we don't get to meet as much as we would like to. Yeah, that's, that is true. TTS has been a great equalizer in all this, although I'm not a personally a big fan because I think 40k is not a good enough game to play on the computer. It's only good when you have somebody in front of you. But I, I agree with the aspect that, hey, now it allows you to play with anybody across the world, regardless of your skill level or theirs, that means that you can practice with Poland or USA or Australia and that pro that allows less experienced teams to catch up in a really rapid way. Mm. Yeah, I have the same struggle with TTS. I, I think it, 
40k is a game to be played live <laughs> but it's the tools we have so we have to use them it's not a secret that my stance is that if i about the 40k it's not even the current rule state i'm like i'm all if i cannot ha if i don't have a beer at 10 a.m in the morning in my hand something is wrong <laughs> i like that idea <laughs> Uh, about that, uh, about the differences between TTS and real life, by the way, I, that the pe when you mentioned pairings, it reminded me of Turkey versus Norway 2017, where we pe played against you. And I don't remember who was your captain, I think it was Adam. Uh, yeah, he was. We, we started pairing, and the cards have faction names on it, but it. it the faction names were with the warlord on. So, with, so if your warlord was a gene stealer cult, but your army was 1900 points tyranids, your card had gene stealer cards on it. And we had Adeptus Ministorum as I was playing with uh, Sisters of Battle. But I, my army was mostly Mechanicus, so it was like 1500 to 1700 points Mechanicus, and a Sisters small detachment. So I put out Adeptus Ministorum, they pick up the card, but they read it as Astra Militarum. Which was a 450 guardsman unit at the start of eight. This is back into Ancient to Salamanca, and they put out two armies that are supposed to roll over and roll over the guard. But as soon as I say I, I get their attackers from who, who were put against the Minstorm army, I'm like, oh, you guys fucked up. You didn't read the cards properly. And then I later learned that. Actually, the team noticed, but their captain has not. Ooh, the team. Yeah. So the so there was some. I t I don't remember who, but I was talking with them, and I was like, I was I was surprised that Adam was putting those two attackers, but I didn't know what to say, so he did, and I was like, oh. and such a mistake doesn't just uh, f uh, doesn't just screw your dad. See, that matchup that allows that allowed us to put out the guard army as a second defender, so it uh, it actually allowed us to win two matches just by one reading just by reading the one card incorrectly. Yeah, that, that's 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 what I was saying, you know, about how you can have the best players in the world, but if they don't, you know, focus on, pay attention to, and understand the pairing process, you know, you can mess it up. But also the other way around, right? Like. You could have a team of players uh, who maybe, maybe you know, there's not Admech in the team, but you could still win a, a round of, of, of team tournament because, you know, you, you pair well and you get the good matchups. You know, so it, it's, um, I've heard so many teams on, like people from, from WTC teams on your podcast, um, both this this faction uh, focus or this nation focus series that you're doing and previously, you know, saying that, um, you know, matches are won and lost in pairings. Um, and so, you know, that's, it's, you know, pairings matrix is something that is, is being built, being studied, being, uh, you know, focused on, um, you know, even before we actually have the full team selected. Um, oh, well, ex exactly. You, you, you essentially learn to learn how that Excel table works as the back of your hand. Which is also the reason why the guy from our team who will be doing pairings will not be drinking at the tournament. Boo, 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 boo. It's, no, no, it's, that's good. That's, that's usually the fun aspect. That's an interesting aspect. It's not for everybody. Some people like to play on the tables. But some people like the pairing process. Some people like to actually practice beforehand. Like it uh, in a team tournament, there is a spot for everybody. You can help your team in many ways, and it's it's one of the, in my opinion, better ways than a single tournament. Yeah, I think I think maybe we will get surprised how fun this is. I, I I'm really looking forward to going, but I think it will be. When we finished with the the tournament, I think I will be left with uh, the impression that this was even better than I expected, uh, because there's so many different and new aspects of the game when you do team tournament compared to singles. So well, this this is going to be fun. 
Well, that's one of the things that I've noticed. Um, like I said, I, I've, I've not played a, an eight-man team tournament before, but I've played plenty of my eight-man team games. Um, and it, this this always sounds weird to people. It sounded weird to me when I was just playing individual 40k and focusing on that. True, it is more fun to play the team game. It, it's just, you know, it's, it's the entire aspect of it being, you know, part of a team and relying on and being relied on by your teammates and it actually becoming uh, more of a... Um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, it becomes a shared experience, right? Which just makes everything a little bit more fun. Exactly. It's it's you. I would be surprised if you, at the Sunday evening, when every game was over, or at Monday when you were returning home, you were wishing for... I wish there were a few more days. So we could play even more because it's we. I, I it's, uh, we attended so far as Turkey five times, no four times, and every time on the return flight back home, we were actually talking about tactics and how we could have improved. And it's like, it's a giant learning experience. It's it's great fun, with to go there with friends. And uh, but when when I say friends, it's my it actually makes me think of something. How are you planning to select your team? Do you have a method of uh, tournaments, or do you plan to just pick, like the captain just picks everybody? No, um, it, it, I think that's the way we have done it. And it also, it's, can you go? No, okay. Can you go? No, okay. We just pick the guys that can go. But this year, we are trying to, to spread the world a little bit uh, and spiking the interest. So there will actually be uh, a player group we can choose from and choose factions. So in, in this year we have maybe half the team set, and uh, we are, as Patrick said earlier, we are having the, the biggest tournament we have had in Norway. I think it's 74 people, and we will also look at the the, the results in that tournament, mm -hmm. and uh, we will try to pick the best player we can that are available. Yeah. So. I just realized we didn't actually answer your question previously <laughs> about how the, the captain and, and, and vice captain get selected. I did, um, I, from my understanding, it just said you raised your hands and nobody objected. Well, actually, so so the, the system in Norway, and, and there, there are, we actually have bylaws, essentially. Like we have a document with written down, you know, over the last 10 years or so, how all, right. like all teams want, want things to be going forward. And the method is. There is um, a group of everybody who has ever been a part of the W, uh, the ETC teams. Mm -hmm. They each have essentially, if, whether they are actively involved in the the current team or not, um, they get a vote essentially. Um, and you know, you present uh, candidates for captaincy, and then there's a vote uh, on who um, becomes the captain. The captain then selects his vice captain, and they select the team. Um, and to answer this question about, you know, the method to how we're going to select the team, yeah, obviously we want the best players possible, but we also agreed quite early on that um, we also need the right type of people. Um, like, having a really, really, really good player doesn't help us if he is unwilling to read through lists and, you know, prepare um, his, you know, reviews on, on what matchups are good and bad, uh, or, you know, to... To uh, to agree to playing, you know, lists that work well for the team, you know. So even if somebody is really, really good, if they, if they can't be an effective part of a team, um, there's not really much point in being part of the team. Okay, so you are you are exactly right. It's you should be able to. Every member should be able to add into the team's pool of knowledge, increase it as much as they can. Always, and that way you will have a more competitive team. And it is, I can also recommend you that you should always think of the team harmony as well. That is not really a tangible thing to do, but even though you might have really good players who contribute, if it is not, it doesn't become a fun experience. It sort of spoils the whole team environment. And then you might encounter problems where 
people don't put in 100% because they feel a bit annoyed from let's say team, one of the team members so it, this is a really hard thing to get a gauge on but I have seen it essentially make an entire team's weekend miserable because one guy had fights with not fights but then like they were, they were disagreement and they've done talking with two other guys and it essentially becomes a weird why are we what are we doing this if we've, like as a captain i have somewhat felt it in a few cases where why am i doing this if i have to play teacher for two adult kids yeah. and that's actually one of our main focuses we, we still want to find the best team we can but the main focus is we have to function as a group and uh, in the end, it's we're going to have we're traveling, taking this trip to have fun, and and so that should be the main goal to to get a good group of people that will have fun together and try to compete yeah. as well as we can. I I traveled the world for, for almost ten years as part of the Norwegian national team for karate, um, which oh. is an individual, which is an individual sport, right? Like there's only one person fighting at a time. Um, but I've definitely seen, um, you know, the friction it can cause with everyone in a team if some people aren't team players. Um, you know, because you're training together, you're living together, you're traveling together, you're supporting each other. Um, and if somebody is not part of the group or somebody is always creating some kind of trouble, it, it just affects everyone. Um, and also, you know, one of the things that I, not having been a part of this before, but I can just immediately see it as a potential problem is if you have players with too much ego, you know, like somebody never wants to be thrown under the bus, <laughs> like, okay, so somebody has to sometimes, you know, and if sometimes you just need people who are willing to sacrifice their own, you know, maybe win or, you know, maybe chances at winning a game for the team to be able to win, right? Exactly, and no, no, uh, I have some players who I can rely on being a team player. Who, who, shout out to Twinch if he's listening. But I have thrown that guy under the bus about a dozen times so far. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like uh, he's playing Tao, and it's like we don't. You get to choose the table, so you are going to first defender, mate. You are, you are going to be the first defender, and I mean, yeah, you you have the advantage of table and. But that's about it. So <laughs> have fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, if, if I mean, this is never going to happen. But as an example, if we go to the WTC next year, I would, well, not if we go, when we go, ah, I would. Positive energy, good. Every second of every day, I would take a loss in every single game if it meant that my team won every round. Like, just it, no question. I yeah, would gladly know. lose every game of mine individually if it meant that the team won every game. And I think that's, you know, uh, that's... You, you, I don't think we can have players in the team who would refuse such, you know, being thrown under the bus or who get cranky about it or who, uh, you know, would, would take it personally because it's not about the individual, it's about the team. No, no, that's, uh, I agree, it's the co that's the correct way to do. There have been attempts in the past by the more, let's say, major players in the in the community to create essentially all-star teams from their country, and that usually just crashes and burns because of internal pressures and not outside, uh, not because of any outside effects. Yeah, definitely. Um, you see that in many sports. Um, so, uh, something we're aware of, uh, which is you okay. know, also why we're, uh, we're focusing on building the best team rather than just selecting necessarily the best team. About that, uh, can you, we were sort of delved into it already because of how the Norwegian player base is separated through geography. Can you talk about the Norwegian community? How, like, just give me some broad numbers, how many players, where are they located, sort of. Uh, do they get do they get to play each other that much and such? Yeah, I think that, that's the, that's the biggest issue we got uh, down here in the southwest. I think we are lucky because there's a fairly large player base in, in Norwegian standards, uh, maybe 40, 50 players, maybe 
10, 20 of, uh, maybe 20 of them are playing regularly. And then we have a community in the South. Uh, it's also quite large. And also in the in Oslo, uh, there's also a big community. And then other than that, it's spread around the whole country. So it is a big problem for a lot of players to get live matches. Uh, we can still do it on TTS, but as we discussed earlier, it's, it's not the same. But I think the main, the main issue, I think, is um, for, for us as, as trying to build a WCT team, the main issue is out of the total amount of players that we have, you know, if, if, if there are 200 players who play actively 40k, um, I don't know, maybe 40 of them go to tournaments uh, and have any kind of ambition to win the tournament. So out of the 74 players that are going to the major that, we're, that is being hosted in the South uh, next month, um, 74 players in the 40k championships um probably i don't know less than half of them is actually going you 20, know, to try 20 to, people to, maybe. to try to win a tournament um which is fine but that also means that you know for an eight-man team you have a group of 20-ish players to sort of pick players from if you want to go for you know uh, if you want to go for players who want to, to play for win, uh, rather than just have a nice social trip. Yeah, but, I, but I actually like that about the Norwegian med as well. But it, it's not too hard. Most of the people are going to these tournaments to have fun. And that's also something I rate highly. That it's it's <laughs> most part for the fun and also a small part to compete. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the most important thing about 40k is, is to enjoy it. Because uh, if we don't enjoy it, we won't play it. But at the same time, you know, as somebody who is a vice captain of a WTC team, I would love to have 200 active tournament players to choose from. Um, sure. That is, that would be, I mean, from the from the numbers you mentioned, you already sound a bit spoiled to me, and because it's in Turkey because of many effects of the economic pressures and the currency rights, we don't even have an active, of, active community of 40 players. Like, there isn't 40 people who are actively playing 40k. So, yeah, I'm like, uh, I, wish I, I wish my community had 40 active players, let alone 200, and where I can choose a good amount of them. But, obviously, the, the, the number you came up in the end of 20 to 30 players who have the ambition to attend and win, you then they need to be go through another uh, limiter, which is if they can actually attend the event. Right, and you know, um, this being Norway, um, most people um, have you know uh, the amount of vacation days and the personal finances to be able to take a trip such as that. Yeah, that but is we good. See, we see the biggest limiting factor is um, is family. Uh, you know, a lot of those guys who were part of those teams that traveled to the ETC nine times, um, you know, they may have been in their early or mid-20s when they were going the first few times. You know, they now have a wife and three kids, um, you know, um, and the reason why some of the, the best players from previous years are not active anymore is because of those things. Um, wait, you know, which is wait, 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 wait. You mean that... Spending time with your family is considered more important than playing with Toyo soldiers, but by those people. Unbelievable. Big boo. Like, yeah, I understand that. that is, family is more important, and this is, in the end, for the vast majority of the people, just a hobby. And you have to work within those parameters. Yeah, yeah that, that that's that's my situation. I have a wife and three kids, so that's that's my limitation of playing. But I, I still try to get in one or two, maybe three games a week, if, if possible. But yeah, uh, Tora is a bit spoiled when it comes to like he's one of the few family men uh, in our community who pretty much gets to play as much as he wants to. <laughs> oh, that 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 is uh, uh, that would. Be, that is so envious, envious for a lot of family man who has to. It's like I know a good a few of my friends who had to cut down their forty k time a bit, but it's like this. So enjoy your 
fortunes. Yeah, I'm pretty lucky that my wife accepts my toy sol to my toy soldiers. <laughs> okay. Not many would. You store most of them in my apartment. <laughs> so we're not about all of my armies. <laughs> we cannot record that. <laughs> uh, okay. Obviously, everything will be properly censored. About but you about the community. Do you think? You would do well against if you if you could form your ideal Norwegian team. Let's say, I already suspect you have some names in your head of the current player base that would that you think would work harmoniously. That are good players. That are team players. Let's assume in this theor theoretical framework that you get to have those eight players. Where do you think Norway would pl uh, place? Out of 40 teams? And uh, percentage wise, so top 10%, top 20%, 50%? I think our goal should be to get above top 50. Now, top 50%, yeah. and, and everything uh, above that, we will be really happy. I think, honestly, um, and I may be, you know, <laughs> I may be a bit ambitious here. Um, but if we if we get the team that we want, um, and we you know um, fully, um, what I'm looking for here, if if we master the the, the pairing and matchups yeah, you know, think... phase and work as much as we can and as well as we would like to, I don't see there's why there's any reason we couldn't get in you know in the top. 30 or 25 percent yeah but i think that's i think we we got players uh, because uh, there is a lot of uh, content creators and everything so i think the meta around the world is getting more and more similar so i think we have the lists and we have the player to manage the lists that we need the armies uh, so it comes down to the job me and patrick is doing with the pairings so if, if we can nail that one uh, i think we can do fairly well yeah yeah, obviously there's, there's always the limiting factors of, oh, can I actually get those, let's say, six Admech Flyers? Do, does the Norwegian community even have 20 Venoms? <laughs> so, it's, that's always a... It's, we got, we got a loss, probably. <laughs> see, see the, 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 thing about, the thing about a large part of our community, um, they may not all have the time to play games as much as they would like to, um, but we do certainly have the armies. <laughs> That's good. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know any player who doesn't have I don't know three or four armies lying around. <laughs> <laughs> that that will really spoil that. Myself, I have four yeah, complete we, armies with everything I need. <laughs> we're also lucky in the fact that somehow, even though Norway is one of the most expensive countries in the world, GW prices are actually pretty similar to Great Britain and Norway. Uh, you are um, you are rated within. You're not within the rest of the world. You're not in the eurozone, right? You have your own currency. Yes. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, because, for example, we get uh, we don't get our special price. We buy it for, for, as the rest of the world price, and that is a bit. That's like ten to fifteen percent at least. It's ex more expensive than the UK price. Yeah, uh, if you go to if you go to um, you know um, independent game stores in Norway, you can usually buy stuff uh, for uh, UK prices, or even sometimes uh, even a tiny bit cheaper. Weirdly enough, um, but I'm just glad we don't live in Australia. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's that. Uh, you, you get the, you get less models, you get them later, you buy them more expensive, and there isn't enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Japan was. I mean, it was like almost twice as expensive as, as the UK. Um, and I was a student while I was living there. I still had like four armies because <laughs> my priorities are absolute shit. Uh, <laughs> I would say they are good. <laughs> yeah, that's, it, that, that's the thing about, about me and Tora is that, you know, um, I'm a single guy uh, who lives by himself and he's a married father of, of you know, three. Um, but we, we have such a huge drive and ambition to be um, as good as we possibly can be in 40k, which means that we want to um, to, uh, to share that with, with the team and with everything and everyone around us, uh, you know, which was also part of the reason why 
you know, we 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 have a club that me and him um, helped found, which is built around that as well. You know, uh, a club focused on just building the best possible players. No, no, that that's good. It's I I enjoy that Norway is Norway team is handed to two people who are passionate about this and who are positive about it too, because there are some cases where. Although the captain is passionate and wants to do things, it's simply his community or her community doesn't allow good progress because of maybe because of many many factors like economics or simply geography or simply small player base. So I am happy to see that Norway is Norway community is willing. You ha it's and it is handed to two of you. Well, there are some really, really brilliant 40k players in Norway. Um, uh, the, um, the unfortunate thing is that they're spread, literally, all of them almost in different cities. Oh. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I can I can imagine that that things would would look really, really good for us as a team um, if if we had all lived in the same city. You know, everybody who, or, or you know, within an hour or two drive. Um, then, then it could be get really, really interesting. How far are these, by the way? We we measured they were far, but we didn't actually measure how far. Uh, if uh, the community in south, it's three or four hours by car, so that's actually not so far. But if if we go into Oslo, it's uh, eight. No, oh, so that's that's eight. like hour. you cannot go for a day thing. It has to be a event. Ah, the the thing is, right, is that. <laughs> All of these, all of these places are all in the southern half of Norway, which is technically not that far away from each other, uh, but it's filled with mountains. So if you want to drive, it takes a long time. If you want to fly, you know, getting from from the west side where we live all the way to the east side, it, it only takes an hour by plane. But then you're starting to talk about, you know, um, expenses and you know, getting half a day off work on the Friday to go to a tournament or whatever it is, and um, um, most people, like we mentioned before, the priority for taking time off is to take time off to go on vacations okay. and stuff like that. Yeah, so. and, and you mentioned all the mountains we have to go over. Uh, you can throw in that one thing Norwegians don't do well is build roads. So it's <laughs> shitty roads. <as> well. <laughs> so it, it takes a long time to drive. Okay, well, that's that's in this, that's a different thing because it's it's yes, it is easier with flight, but. You don't really want to fly, especially in in our case, where you you cannot really you already travel with a lot of luggage because of the army. So your cabin luggage just has to be your army. That means you have to then you cannot really fly with budget airlines because you have to buy the uh, check-in luggage, and that increases the prices. And it, then you have to travel. You cannot walk around places. You have to carry your luggage around and that increases the general cost of travel quite a bit yeah and we all already put down a lot of money in the in the toy soldiers so there might not be that much to spare for buying every weekend yeah, yeah exactly so uh, we got so that is a good insight because that wasn't a thing so far in, in the talks I had it was it was it is an interesting to see Oh, we need to we decide to travel by car, but then because just simply because of the mountains and not even because of the vertical distance, it's all right. That's good. That's that's a new thing. That's Norway. <laughs> I have been to Norway. It is a lovely country. Yeah, we, we are really proud of our nature and mountains and uh, fjords <laughs> until we have to drive over them. Yeah. <laughs> just, just stay in one fjord, enjoy the sights, and just. Stay there. Just don't travel. It'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, I've I've always been really lucky because um, uh, I had a parent who works for the airlines, uh, so I fly almost for free. Um, ah, but me, unfortunately, I, I cannot you know give that to the rest of the team. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's it's one of my uh, one of my let's say ultimate dream is that we can get a major airline to sponsor WTC and have all the players fly around for free and it's if that happens I just, that would be great so if if any 
if any of our listeners is like a general manager of an airline, please, pretty please, like we'll be thankful a lot. Well, that, would, that would be amazing. <laughs> I'd be very surprised if there are any CEOs of airlines listening, but you but, never know. No, uh, look, I know one of the, essentially, I know a person who is a, a major international conglomerate. I mean, the guy will be their CEO. It is certain. It's just, it will, it's just going to take five to ten years. But he is, he's essentially pushing blood angels around. That's it. It's that he is going to be the CEO of a major, major international conglomerate. So you never know. Maybe one time in the future. Yeah, I know, right? So, what, and to sort of wrap things up in general, obviously we cannot talk about your past experience for WTC, but we can talk about future. What would you like to see in the WTC? What would be your ideal WTC look like? Norway number one. Woo! Norway number one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not ideal, not realistic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I did say that, so that you got me there. But this, this is more like a, it's like me asking you, essentially as a feedback mechanism, what would you like us to do as the TOs to improve the event for you? Um, that, that's a tough question when you have when when you haven't gone to one yet. Yeah, but, just well, this can be tangible things like oh, we want. If you want beer at five degrees with this much uh, in glass, in glass glasses, and we want this meal in the, in those weird smelly fishes or whatever, which we will not have. But it's like maybe or maybe they can be more intangible things, like an atmosphere of, like an at atmosphere of friendliness put ahead of competition, or maybe you'd like to have the tournament take forefront and the social activity second. So that is. What, that's up to you to answer this question in any way you want. If, if you have cold beer, then that checks the first 10 items on my list. <laughs> then that's down, and, and I'm really hoping for a friendly atmosphere, and I really believe it is, uh, because the community is... The experiences I've had in the community, it's always friendly, and uh, as long as there is cold beer, then I'm good to go. So... Um... To relate back again to, to previous experiences and the sport that I was doing, um, it was a martial art, which means that when you're when you're facing other people from other countries on the tournament floor, you are literally fighting against them, you know, trying to punch and kick them in the face. <laughs> um, the atmosphere around the tournament, off the mat, you know, in the stands, in the evenings, in the in the party, you know, is all about um, friendship and making new friends and making new connections and you know sharing an experience together and for me i think that would be the most valuable thing obviously you know i want our team to do well but if i can make you know a ton of new friends uh, from different teams from around the world and you know get new connections and um you know uh get that positive shared experience uh, as 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 something to take home with me, I, I think that would be the most valuable thing. So definitely hoping that there's a big uh, party at the end of it. We usually have the parties just on the Fridays, so that because that way we can, especially because people have to go, uh, leave my, some people because I have to go to, so the official party is on Friday evening, some people leave Sunday as soon as they can, but then there's the after party on Sunday night, which is always a blast. Yeah, we will we will make sure to stay um, stay for that one. <laughs> no, I, I, if, so I suggest you I suggest you put your flight for Monday and not late Sunday. Just just bite just take the Monday off. Just stay there for one more evening. It will be great. I have I have friends uh, living uh, a couple of hours away from the town we're going to be in in Austria. So I I might very well just stay an extra few days well, to recover. Uh, that'll be good. Do you guys have any uh, shout outs to or links you want or such communities or Facebook pages you want to push forward? Can we put forward our own club? <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, it, this can be stores. There is some pictures rolling in the background if you are really listening to this on YouTube. So it, it might be. 
Yeah, first of all, a big shout out to Victory Point. That's our local store. Oh, where we are sitting recording right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I dropped by the store earlier today and I told told them we were doing this podcast. He said, ah, you should use our equipment. It's much better sound and everything. And they are always, uh, if we want to put on a tournament, they are, yeah, keep it here. It's no problem. We'll provide prices and everything and tables. And so big shout out to Victory Point. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, no, it's, um, uh, like I said, we, we created our own club with the focus of creating the best players possible. Um, we're a very tournament-focused club, um, competitive play, so obviously we named it Fluff Bunny Gaming. Very, um, very appropriate name. Exactly. Uh, but no, I, I would like to actually, uh, most importantly, shout out all the Norwegian 40k players. Um, uh, you guys make uh, the tournaments we go to and the community that we have building here in Norway uh, really fun and really good. And I look forward to seeing everybody at the tournament uh, at Invasion uh, in Christiansand next month. All right, I know. I know. I looked into the Invasion, and it looks like it's going to be a nice event. And all the groups, the Invasion event, and the Fluffy Bu <laughs> Fluff Funny Gaming, and the uh, Gaming Club and Team Norway, all links will be provided. This in both the SoundCloud and the YouTube. So if you want to, if you're going to Norway, if as a listener, you can connect with those groups from the links in the description. And I'm really happy to have new people come in and play games and, and just chat or go for a beer or whatever. All right. And so it was fun having you guys on the podcast. And if I think I get a really good insight on how the Norwegian community works, and I'm looking forward to meeting you guys in person next August. Yeah, we are also really looking forward to meeting you and everybody else, and, and thank you so much for having us. Everyone except Tom. Which Tom? There are lots of Toms. Tom Layden. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, fuck that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I've never met him, I've never talked to him, but he seems like a guy who can take a bit of banter. Oh, the... Uh, Look, I'll explain Tom in a bit to you, but he, he, we thought, and ironically, Tom Layton is one of the greatest guys in the community, and he's a treasure to be around. <laughs> yeah, he, he, I, I, I've been looking forward to meeting him for a while, and I'm definitely going to buy him a few bits when I do. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so, I would, and I would like to be there as well when you do that. And <laughs> for sure. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and... We ho I hope to see you guys, well, I would not be seeing you, but you'll be hearing my voice, in the next episode of the WTC Podcast, Inter Scott, have a nice day.